People have been using graphics cards to do non-graphics operations since about 2001. Then, in 2006, NVIDIA released their CUDA framework to help make general-purpose computing on their cards a little easier. Most CPUs are created to perform one or two math operations at a time in each of its cores. However, a GPU is specially created to perform one operation across many pieces of data at the same time. Because they can perform many matrix operations much faster than a CPU, researchers have been using them to train deep learning models. Then in 2014, NVIDIA released the Jetson TK1 development kit, which allowed people to play around with a form of embedded GPU, the Tegra chip. The Nintendo Switch actually uses a Tegra. NVIDIA released the smallest of its Jetson line back in June of 2019. This is the Jetson Nano, and it allows you to play around with some deep learning algorithms on something a little bigger than a Raspberry Pi. Over the next couple of episodes, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Jetson Nano. There's a few things to keep in mind before we get started. First, remember that the Jetson Nano is an embedded device. That means it's likely going to be slower than your laptop or desktop computer. As a result, it's usually not a good idea to train full deep learning models on the Nano as it will take a very long time. If you're starting from scratch, it's usually a good idea to train a model from data on your desktop or a powerful internet server optimized for such tasks. To do this, we use a known set of data, like images of a cat, to teach a model what a cat should look like. This model can be something like a deep neural network. We can then copy this model over to the Jetson Nano and use it to make predictions or inferences on new data. If the Nano is so slow to train, why even use it at all? Well, it's an embedded system, which means we can use it to control hardware. NVIDIA even has a number of guides and kits worth looking at if you want to build a robot around the Jetson Nano called the JetBot. These are useful for playing around with your own tiny autonomous vehicle. But the Jetson Nano can do a lot of things right out of the box. Let's set it up and do some basic image recognition. In the Jetson Nano box, you'll find the little computer itself. To get it to work, you'll need a number of accessories. NVIDIA recommends a 5 volt, 2 amp power supply for the Nano. However, if you plan to do any real processing, like retraining models, you'll need more than that. Otherwise, the Nano seems to stall out or reboot. Many developers recommend a beefy 5 volt, 4 amp supply with a barrel jack. NVIDIA also states that the minimum micro SD card is 16 gigabytes. This will basically just run Linux and some of the out-of-the-box demos. If you want to collect your own data and do actual programming, you'll need more than that. Anything that's 32 gigabytes and over and at least a UHS-1 speed rating seems to work. The Nano does not come with an onboard Wi-Fi card, so you'll need to supply your own or use an Ethernet cable to connect it to your network. I had an old Eddie Max EW7811UN lying around, which seems to work. To do the initial setup and view live camera feeds, you'll want to bring a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Speaking of live camera feeds, you'll also want a webcam or CSI camera. A Raspberry Pi V2 camera supposedly works, but all I've got is a Logitech C920, which seems to work just fine for this. Finally, you see that giant heatsink? If you plan to do any hard processing, you'll want to move air across it as it can get quite toasty. A 40 by 40 millimeter fan seems to fit perfectly on the top of the heatsink. Fans with a 4-pin connection seem to work the best as the Nano has PWM control over it, which allows it to turn it on and adjust the speed only when necessary. To begin, head to the Getting Started with Jetson Nano page. Go to the Write Image section and click the SD card image link to start downloading the Linux image. NVIDIA has a free class you can sign up for that walks you through a few examples. If you do this course, note that they have you download a different image for the Nano, which comes preloaded with a variety of tools. Once the image has finished downloading, use a program like Etcher to burn the image to the SD card. To power the Nano with the barrel jack, you'll need to add a jumper to bridge the pins on J48. When the image is done burning, insert the SD card underneath the Jetson Nano module. Attach the fan to the heatsink using some M3 screws. Connect the fan to the four pins just behind the Ethernet port. After that, attach the keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Finally, plug in power and wait while the Nano boots up. Right now, the Jetson Nano image is based on Ubuntu 18.04. When it first boots up, it'll walk you through the setup process. Do as it asks, creating a username, password, setting a time zone, and connecting to a network. Once you've logged into Ubuntu, you'll need to do a few setup steps to make working with the Nano easier. 
bring up a terminal. If you're using an Edimax Wi-Fi adapter like mine, you might run into issues where the connection is randomly dropped. To fix that, we first want to disable power saving mode to WLAN 0. Then, we need to modify Etsy modprobe.d blacklist.conf. In VI, scroll to the bottom of the file and press O to add a new line and go into insert mode. Add the line blacklist RTL 8192CU. Press escape to leave insert mode and type colon WQ to save and exit. Reboot the machine. This should hopefully fix any of the Wi-Fi problems with the common Edimax devices. SSH is enabled by default, but if you want a remote desktop connection, I found that the RDP protocol works better than VNC. So update the apt package manager first and install XRDP. Do an if config to get your IP address as we'll need it later. When that's done, reboot your Nano. Make sure that the Nano is turned on but logged out. In Windows, open the remote desktop connection tool. RDP is a Microsoft standard, but I know there are RDP clients for Mac and Linux, I just haven't tried them yet. Set your IP address and click Options. I recommend setting your username here. Under the Display tab, a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 seems to work pretty well. I also recommend changing your color depth to 16 bits, as this will make things draw more quickly on the client side. Under Experience, setting the performance to a 56K modem seems to help make things run a little more smoothly. Supposedly, disabling bitmap caching can also help. Go ahead and connect. You should be presented with a login screen. Supply your password when asked, twice in some instances. If you click on Activities, you should get the Ubuntu launcher to pop up. Search for Terminal to bring up a terminal window. You can also access other applications too, like the file browser. While this is one good way to work on your Jetson remotely, it really doesn't work with things like live camera feeds. You'll still want to use the monitor connected to the Jetson Nano for that. If remote desktop isn't your thing, you can also use basic SSH. Fire up a client like Putty or Termius. The SSH server should be running on the Jetson Nano by default, so just type in the IP address of the Nano. From there, log in and you should have full access to the machine. If you need to access files from a graphical explorer on your host machine, you can install SSHFS, which is pretty easy to do on Mac and Linux. On Windows, you'll need to install a couple of programs. Head to github.com slash billzis gh slash winfsp. Go to the releases page and scroll down to the latest release. Download and run the .msi installer file. Accept all the defaults and follow the prompts to install the file system proxy tool. Next, head over to the billzis gh slash sshfs win repository and go to the releases page. Find the latest release and download the .msi file. Run it and follow the prompts to install SSHFS for Windows. I do recommend rebooting Windows when it's done. Open up a file explorer window and right click on this PC. Select add a network location. Follow the prompts until you're asked for the network address of the remote machine. Enter backslash backslash SSHFS backslash your username on the Jetson at name of your Jetson. You could also use the IP address instead of the Jetson's host name here. When you click Next, you should be asked to enter the password for the Jetson. Feel free to keep Remember Me selected if you don't want to have to log in each time. Keep going through the process with all the defaults. At the end, a new Explorer window should open, giving you access to the files in the Jetson. Note that it opened in my user's home directory. This should make it a lot easier to copy files from my laptop to my Jetson if I'm working on machine learning stuff on both computers. With our remote station set up, we can install the necessary packages from NVIDIA. Use apt to install git, cmake, libpython3-dev, and python3-numpy. When that's done, clone the Jetson inference repository, making sure to use the recursive flag to initialize all the submodules. After that, navigate into the inference directory and make a build folder. Go into the build folder and call cmake from here, pointing to the directory above it. You will likely be asked for your password a few times, as it needs root access to install some things. This will take some time, so be patient. At some point, you will be asked to download pre-trained models. Leave the default Google Net and ResNet 18 selected and press Enter to continue. Then you will be asked to install PyTorch, which is needed for some of the NVIDIA demos. Many people still use Python 2, but I'm trying to use Python 3 for everything. So I'm going to select PyTorch for Python 3. Press the spacebar to select it and press Enter to continue. Once CMake is done, call the make command and let it do its thing. 
After, call sudo make install followed by sudo ld config to install and link some of the programs you just built. If you type python dash dash version and find that the system is defaulting to python 2, we need to make one slight adjustment to tell it to use python 3, assuming you want to use python 3. Edit dot bash rc with vi and go to the bottom of the document. Add alias python equals python 3 and then save and exit. Enter source tilde slash dot bash rc to execute that file. Now, try typing python dash dash version again and you should see that the system defaults to python 3 this time. If you go to the Jetson inference repository, you can see that it has a good number of tutorials to try out. The first is the Hello AI world, where you can try a few canned demos and attempt some transfer learning on an existing deep neural network. We'll explore this in the next episode. There's also a section called Two Days to a Demo, where you can fully train a neural network using the NVIDIA Digits system. However, this requires a beefy workstation with a modern NVIDIA graphics card or access to a cloud-based GPU server. And that's it! You should be all set up with your shiny new Jetson Nano. You can work on it directly with a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, or you can use it in headless mode via SSH and remote desktop. If you're working on vision processing stuff, you'll probably find that you swap back and forth between working on it directly and working on it remotely. Please subscribe if you'd like to keep up with these videos, and happy hacking!